Welcome back to Firefighter Safety Tips with Firefighter Caffarata. We're in my kitchen. This is the brightest place in my house. So I want to go over some simple things today. But first, my disclaimer is I am a firefighter. I'm not a doctor. And uh, if there is an emergency, uh, you don't have to call me and don't watch my videos, but call 911 if there is an emergency. Now, today we're going to assess some vital signs. So when you're assessing vital signs, do you guys know where to check for vital signs? Now, there's a couple different places, right? Uh, do you check with, first of all, do you check with your thumb? No, you don't. Because your thumb, there's actually like, you can feel there's actually a pulse within your thumb. So we tell everybody not to check with your thumb, but check with your two fingers right here. Okay, so the middle and pointer. So just like this. There's a carotid artery. You want to feel, and you're going to feel for a pulse. It's on both sides. That's a carotid. Carotid, you could do that with, uh, with let's see, I would say kids, children that are like of school age, also adults. But when it goes to infants, no. When it goes to little babies, no. That's, you check for a brachial pulse. And brachial is in the arm right here. So you feel the arm, you should flex so I look at least a little buff there. But anyway, so you feel right in the arm, right in the arm, okay? And you're gonna feel a strong pulse. That's the brachial. You can move it around, but it's usually in between, like it's right, right near the bone. You put your two fingers on it, and you're gonna feel for a pulse. Now you check for 60 seconds. You don't have to hold it for 60 seconds, you can do it for 30 seconds. You can do it for 20 seconds, but then you have to multiply it to make it a minute. So you know how many beats per minute. Another check, another place you could check, and this is for adults, this is for, uh, you know, for also children, but not for infants, is radial. So radial is right here. It's basically your thumb meets your arm right there. You could, you could check for your pulse. And that's the radial pulse. It's another good one to check. Femoral pulses are in between the legs where your legs meet your torso, your body, your, your lower body. The genitalia area. So that's called the femoral pulse. You can check for that. The distal pulse is on your feet. That's another one that you could check. And I'm going to put my foot up here. Oh, right in front, there's a strong pulse. That's distal pulse. So four vital signs. And when you're also assessing for children, you're looking at, you know, a children versus an adult. What is the difference, right? So an adult pulse is anywhere from like 60 to 100. 60 to 100. And that's normal. That's good. It can be a little lower. That means you might be an athlete. You might be my wife. Something like that. Uh, or it could be a lot higher if you're working out. And that's how you burn calories. So that's okay. When you're looking at like a child, a child and a preschooler are very similar. It's anywhere from 80 to 120. So 80 to 120 is typically for a child, preschooler, and, a, and a, uh, also a child. When you're looking at a toddler, it's 98 to 140. So 98 pulse to 140. And that's where you check toddlers, the brachial. For an infant, it goes from anywhere from 100 to 180. So for an in infant, 100 to 180 is the pulse. And you can also check at the brachial. So the brachial pulses. That's where you check. Now, that's where you assess the pulses. But now you want to assess breathing. So you're doing the circulation, you're doing the breathing, and the breathing for an adult is, is very simple. For a, a typical adult, it's anywhere from 12 to 20 respirations per minute. For uh, a child and also like a, a preschooler, so a child preschooler, it's very similar. It's uh, 20 to 28. And so for both of them, that would be okay. If you want to look up the exact statistics, you could look at the American Heart Association website and they could show you exact statistics on exactly what it is. But like the, the preschooler is 20 to 28, and for the child, it's 18 to 25. I just say 20 to 28 is good for both of those categories. But when you go to a toddler, that's where it starts going up. Respirations are 22 to 20, or to 37 a minute. So 22 to 37, so for a toddler. So it's okay anywhere in between 22 to 37. Now the infant, they breathe a lot faster, their lungs are smaller, and they're, you could constantly hear them breathing, right? And that's 30 to 53. So 30 to 53. So just imagine 30 to 50, that's fine. So those are for respirations, and that's for pulses. Now, we're gonna also talk about, let's say there's some active bleeding. 
Now these are like simple things that could possibly happen with a child, God forbid, or with an adult when you're making dinner, right? You get a cut. And you get a cut, you want to do direct pressure. So first of all, direct pressure. So you get a shirt, you get a towel, and if I cut my finger, it's direct pressure right on there. So I'm just gonna put direct pressure, right? So next thing you wanna do is you wanna elevate. They say elevate above your heart. So you wanna elevate higher than your heart. So direct pressure, elevate, so you control your breathing, your, not breathing, you control your bleeding. It's very similar, breathing, bleeding. So you control it, so you elevate. So then, if that doesn't work, there's pressure points. So pressure points are the arteries that we were talking about. When you check for the carotid, you're not gonna put pressure there. You're not gonna do a tourniquet there, that'd be a really bad idea. But, uh, so you're gonna check for your pressure points, which is the basic places like the brachial, right? That's a pressure point. If you have bleeding below, so if you have bleeding below, you elevate, you control the breathing, uh, breathe, uh, bleeding by pressure points, and you could also put pressure on the pressure points. So there's also the radial. If it's in your hands, you can put pressure on the radial. So those are pressure points. Those are pressure points that you could pay attention to. If there's bleeding on the legs, you could lay the person down flat, and you could slightly elevate their leg, right? And what you want to do is you could, you could control the, breathe, the bleeding and you want to put direct pressure, right? And then what you want to do is pressure points. So there's the femoral artery and uh, the distal would be on the foot. That's if there's like a toe bleed, something like that. You could do that. Now, the last but not least, I wouldn't recommend this to a lot of people and I would do your research before you get there. And uh, tourniquets, I don't really recommend for anybody because uh, that's like the last result or last ditch effort to save like uh, a limb or bleeding. But basically you get something that can be long, it can be a t-shirt, you wrap it around and you just make like a little knot, right? And this is just with one hand, but basically you make a knot and you tie it just tight enough so it reduces the amount of circulation. So that's kind of like a tourniquet way to control bleeding as well, not breathing. So those are simple steps for some uh, just safety around the house. So pay attention to breathing, respirations, and if there is some type of cut, right, that you could control it, control the bleeding by, you know, direct pressure, elevation, pressure points. And I wouldn't really do tourniquets, but that is also a direction you could go as well. So thank you for joining me today for Firefighter Safety Tips with Firefighter Cavaretta. Join me next time, and I'll have more fun safety tips to uh, talk about. Thanks.